This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Monaco versus Gould. You all have been married for 10 years, and I noticed from the court papers, you all are from Alaska, is that correct? Yes, Your That's Honor. Correct, Your Honor. We know it gets pretty cold in Alaska. Whether this relationship gets colder than that depends on what happens here today. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Monaco, you've opened up this lawsuit. Tell us why. After being with someone for 10 years, you get to know behaviors and, and patterns, and lately his behaviors have been very shady and very suspicious, and um, there's been a lot of heartache in our marriage for the last year, a lot of arguing. I feel like I'm in the same room with him, and he's a million miles away, that the connection has been lost, the bond has been broken, and, and I miss him. I miss the affection we used to have and the romance, and I, I don't know where he's gone. It must be really distressing to be in the room with someone and there's, it's, you might, might as well be in the room with this. Right. Okay. Mr. Gould, you know, what are you here to prove today? Well, Your Honor, um, I'm here to show her that, you know, I'm not cheating on her, that, um, you know, I've been loyal and I want her to um, start trust me. You know, there was trust and the trust has been eroded and, um, you know, I want to bring that back into the relationship so things uh, work out between us a lot better. So, Ms. Monaco, there was cheating in the past, and so you have concerns that he's back to his old tricks again. What are those warning signs? Like, he will go run errands or go to the store and be gone. His time's not accounted for. He'll be gone for three hours and go to the store and come back with one thing. And it's usually something that he wouldn't even buy for himself. So I think he's buying it for somebody else or his no. phone will be off while he's gone. And, I can't get a hold of him, and he just always has an excuse for, for these things. Well, you know, sometimes lines are long at the supermarket, you know, a lot of people there. <laughs> you, sometimes, uh, but every time... Okay, yeah. once or twice you might be able to buy, but every time he's gone, just for a little shopping errand, it takes three hours. Right. And women are attuned to these things. Like, you know, the first time it happens, you're like, hey, that took a while. And you might look at what he bought and say, when did he start using that? And then the next time it happens, you're like, okay, wait a minute. And then the third time it happens, you're like, okay, we got a problem here. Right. So you got a running clock going in your head every time I leave the house and go to the store? <laughs> you say no. women are attuned to it, so it's like, and go. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying that it, you, you, you don't know that until you realize, hey, it's something to miss here. It's just a but, feeling. But it's a feeling. It's, I mean, we notice everything. We notice when you wear different cologne, or you're putting on cologne more often, or if you start wearing your fancy underwear, or if you... All those things. Women notice My all that. fancy underwear. Well, I'm not saying you <laughs> have Ron's fancy... Under <laughs> <laughs> Ron, Ron, do you have fancy underwear? Not really, no. Okay, all Okay, right. well, like, if you go from boxers to, right. to tidy whities or vi vice versa, or all those things we take in, if you start showering, more often, even though it appears to be a good thing, but it's like, you only take a shower once a day, now you're taking two a day. Those are all the things that kind of get on our radar and say, now, what is that? And so, Ms. Monagola, are these the kinds of things you're seeing just like after you've been together for so long, you start to see these, these drastic changes? Right, right. And so, all of them add up to one thing. Like, one morning, we went for an appointment, and after the appointment, he dropped me off at work. Okay. And... When I come home from work that day, we go to take off our jackets to hang them up. He has no shirt on underneath his jacket. <gasps> and he took his shirt off with some other woman. That's what I believe. Okay. Now, Mr. Goo, I would love to be able to advance the, the argument that you just got hot and you took your shirt off, but you live in Alaska. <laughs> so that, I don't think that's gonna fly very well. Why did you have your shirt off at a point in time where she thinks, Oh, yeah, you definitely should have had a shirt on. She saw you before with the shirt on. Right. Well, Your Honor, I grabbed whatever, threw it on, and my jacket was right there, so I just threw it over, not thinking, and went about the day. I know, you know, it sounds ridiculous, but, you know, when I came back home and uh, unzipped it, you know, it was like, okay, oh, I forgot, you know, I wasn't wearing a shirt. But you get used to it. You don't notice the layers so much. But nevertheless, you can understand why your wife is like, really? Because I'm sitting here going, really? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, well, I, I guess you could leave your shirt off, but I'm as not sure. As long as you don't go anywhere where you've got the no shirt, no service sign, you're okay. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you don't believe him. You think it's... I think all these things add up to, to another woman. 
Have you found anything that makes you think that he's cheating? Yes, when I've, I've done laundry around the house, I found clothes that aren't mine. Oh. On... Like what kind of clothes? Um, one occasion I found underwear that were too big to be mine. <laughs> Recently, I found another pair of underwear that were too small for me. Uh, I found them at the end of the bed and... Oh! Also found a pair of socks at the end of the bed and the pair of socks I found, I saw on a woman that had been over to our house previously. Was this woman a friend or who was More this woman? More of an acquaintance, a friend of a friend. So you, these socks you saw on another woman who had been to your house, an acquaintance, and you trying to figure out why is this woman's socks at the end of my bed? Absolutely, it leads me to believe that the underwear were hers too. Mr. Gould, you seem to have a problem with clothes. You don't have clothes you're supposed to. <laughs> clothes that are not supposed to be there are showing up. I mean, I was okay with the no shirt thing, but now this is another level. Women's yeah. panties that don't belong to your wife in your house, at the end of your bed, how in the world can you explain that? One of the explanations I came up with was that, um, you know, maybe she, uh, when she was, she likes to use uh, multiple dryers for one load of clothes when she washes them. And so I thought, you know, sometimes maybe somebody forgot their underwear in. I know it sounds crazy, it sounds ridiculous, but I honestly don't have a real good explanation for it. Um, other, and then another thing could be, I also uh, told her, you know, my ex lives down the road. You know, this is something that could have been, you know, she's been trying to get even with me, so maybe she planted them, I don't know. Um, you know, we do leave our door unlocked and whatnot. I know it sounds ridiculous, but... But I, you know. I picked up on, you said, one of the excuses I gave, like... No, one of the excuses I came up with. Came up that with. That was his phrase. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't sound... Well, one of the reasons, I meant one of the reasons why it was there at the time, yeah. I mean, excuses, but... I just, honestly, I don't have a real good reason for it being there. I don't know why it gets there. Okay, but please don't suggest to me that now we have a pair of underwear, a pair of socks, that have been planted by somebody else. Now, just, at two not, different times. Not just by somebody else. But his ex. An ex. Okay. <laughs> so you're not telling us that, are you? I don't know, Your Honor. You know, I have no good reason for why it's there. I just, it wasn't me. So, I mean, that's all I can say, really. Honestly, I didn't have anything to do with it. That's what you got. That's what I got. <laughs> okay, I gotta ask this question, Cutler. The socks. You said you saw these same socks on an acquaintance. Yes. If it were me, I'd have to do a little bit more of an investigation of that woman. Have you, perchance, done that? Well, I, I didn't really need to. I, uh, last week when I came home from work, I, I don't take my phone to work with me. I leave okay. it at home. Okay. When I came home from work that day and opened up my phone, I can see that this woman's socks, I thought they were, had logged into her Facebook account on my phone. And I don't understand how that happened unless she was there that day. So you're wondering why is some why woman... Why sock lady? Why is this... <laughs> yeah, this particular woman in your house. Right, and he, he knows I'm uncomfortable with her being there at all. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with her, period. Okay, so why was sock lady at the house? Your Honor, um, you know what? I have no good explanation for that either. Um... Okay, wait. What? Was she at the house? Uh, as far as I know, no. But, you know, I mean, I have no idea what... It just came in and she brought that up and I don't know, Your Honor. I have no idea. We leave our doors unlocked, our windows open. It's hot in the summer. It could be a possibility that maybe she came into the house and, and um, I don't know. You know. Okay, you know what? This is not Goldilocks just trying to find some <laughs> porridge and a comfortable bed or, or a nice chair to sit in. Well, this is... <laughs> you know, just walk in folks' houses and say... Well, let me see. Oh, her phone. Let me go in there and let me use her phone. Well, it kind of is like Goldilocks because you had one pair of panties that were too big, you had another <laughs> pair of panties that were too small, and then you had the socks that fit just That's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I mean... I'm not, it, I don't and even the, have words it, for this. I don't have words for it either, only because for each scenario, he's like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> and, you know, at some point, you know, it points to one thing. Either you're not being fully forthcoming or you are by far the world's unluckiest person. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, They just don't make sense to me. It, well, me and you, we're here. Right. It doesn't make sense. And not only does it not make sense, it's, it's very hurtful to you, isn't it? 
Oh, my heart aches every day. I, I still very much love him. I very much still have a crush on him. Tell I, him how I, it makes you feel. I, it hurts me every day. I, every day we're going through it where we should be having good memories made. We're, we're making bad ones. Well, Mr. Cutler, this is a 10-year marriage on the line. They have been together 11 years. She feels distant and apart from him. And it's because of this evidence. She found... She has found mystery panties, one too small, one too big, twice in their home. Once on the foot of their bed. One of them in the foot of the bed. She's found socks that belong to an acquaintance. And that... And, and those socks were also found in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And when she came home from work one day, picks up her phone, she's left her phone at, at, at home for five hours, picks it up, and this woman, the sock lady, I've dubbed her, has used her phone to log into Facebook. And what we have is basically no response or nuh-uh from Mr. Gould. Yeah. And she says, if this continues, if this is true, she's done. Am I right, Ms. Monaco? Yes. You just can't continue I... to have this heartache. Right, right. Every day it seems I'm crying over something or we're arguing over something. It's just... Uh, been very dramatic the last year, and you're just like I can't. I need put him up to with come this. back to me, or or tell me he's in love with somebody else. But what you're not going to do is stay in limbo. Absolutely not. I can't do that. So, so the stakes Gould, are high. Are you in love with somebody else? No, Your Honor. Is there somebody else? No, Your Honor. There isn't. You know, I know she doesn't believe me, but it is what it is, and you know that's that's how it is, and you know I'm not guilty of that, so. And you're here to prove that today. I'm here to prove that today. Once yes. and for all. Once and for all. Absolutely. All right. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call former military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine, is he cheating? Ms. Cisco, would you please state for the court record your credentials? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former military interrogator certified by the Department of Defense, and shortly after 9-11, I was deployed to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. And since that time, I have been training law enforcement personnel, military personnel, and government agency personnel in interviewing and interrogation techniques. Some people have even gone to jail based on your analysis and your interrogation, correct? That is correct. So, can you tell us what you did to investigate this particular case? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I first had the accused write a witness statement. So, I go through that and I look for any indicators of truthfulness and deception. I studied their case files. I put together an interrogation plan. And then, with those two pieces of evidence, I call them, I create an interrogation plan and interrogate the accused to see if they are cheating. So, you conducted a full investigation. What were the results of your investigation? At first, Mr. Gould's body language was very difficult to read because he was closed off during the entire interview. However, he still engaged in conversation with me. He admitted that he had cheated in the past, but he told me that for the past two years that he's been faithful and he hasn't cheated. Now, Ms. Monago has found mysterious panties around the house, mysterious socks, and she believes that may belong to a mutual friend of theirs. In your investigation, what did you find out about this mutual friend? Mr. Gould admitted to me that he wanted to engage in a threesome with this woman. So he said that she was very young and attractive. But then he told me that he did not play with her or have sex with her. Hmm. Is there anything else you learned while you were interrogating Mr. Gould? Mr. Gould did tell me... He also feels that, and again, I'm going to quote him, for the last two years of being faithful, I feel like it's been for nothing because I'm still being accused of be cheating. Hmm. So, at the end of your interrogation, what was your conclusion about whether Mr. Gould is cheating or not? So, my overall conclusion is that Mr. Gould has not cheated and has been faithful for the past two years. <laughs> Ms. Monaco, upon hearing those results, What's going through your mind right now? I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> I, you can go over there and I let mean... him know. <laughs> 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 
You all have known each other for 20 years. You're dating, you're living together. But this relationship has hit a snag. And whether that snag gets worked out depends on what happens in this courtroom today. Uh, Mr. Ducharme, what's on the line here? What's on the line today is this relationship's on the line today. Like, it's a lot of things go on. And I don't look for it, but like, I can't help but to notice, like, sometimes maybe she might have like a hickey here, and then she have a hickey here. I'm like, girl, is this a hickey? She's like, nah, I ain't no hickey, man. That's just something. Or... So what does all this lead you to believe? She's spending all this time with these extra fellows, and like, I just need to know what kind of actions is going on with these fellows. Because uh, she claims innocent, but I claim wrong. All right, Miss Daly, why is this, why is your being here important to you? To prove to him that his imagination runs really wild, like those hickeys, because that's something you do in junior high. Okay. I don't have any. You don't have, like, a traveling birthmark that just no. moves from place to place, do you? I have three birthmarks, and not only one resembles the hickey. Okay. <laughs> the other two are light brown. Like, okay. Yeah. Mr. Deshaun, how, how did you two meet? How did you all get together? Okay, Judge, we met about 20 years ago. We <laughs> ran with the same circle, and uh, it was always like uh, she was just too busy for me back then, like, over the last 20 years, and then... Uh, we came over at a mutual friend's house and uh, we ran into each other again. And uh, I guess she had time for me this time. Said about three words to her and it was over after that. It was on? Yeah. It only took you three words? Yeah, about three hot words. She said, it's gonna be 90 days before we make anything happen, which was cute to me. <laughs> <laughs> and like, he did not so, say that was cute to me. It was, okay. And I'm like, man, I'm kind of old for this, but we could try. Uh, and, okay. Cause, Cause that was my question. Did, did you start out thinking, okay, but then sometime during, you're like, we're not gonna make it 90 days? No, or from it. the beginning where you were like, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. okay, whatever. Hey, Judge, it was cute. It was cute. <laughs> oh, I, so, so, you know, oh. inquiring minds want to know, yeah. how many days of the 90 days did y'all make it? <laughs> seven. <laughs> seven? That's why. <laughs> you said I'm seven? Lying. You said <laughs> seven? Yeah. Okay. That's a lie. I was like, yeah. uh, wait a minute. Look, we didn't have... That's a week. That's, that's a week. week. That's, that's a week. week. Oh, you can take me back to court. We can test it. He just wants to make it that answer, then that's all I want to make okay, it. Okay, nine, maybe. It was, yeah. Maybe nine. Well, here's the thing. We have folks come in here. They don't make it past half an hour. So, yeah. you know, the fact <laughs> y'all got the nine days or seven days, eh. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. Mr. Taylor, I'm almost impressed. <laughs> so, 20 years of admiring her and thinking, hmm, you make this connection, what has happened to bring you to couples court? Okay, so, the first thing that happens is, uh, we were hanging out one time, we were at a friend's house, and her phone, it, her phone turned up missing. Okay. So, we used my phone to track her phone. Okay. And it all worked out, we ended up getting her phone back, and also ends well, but we get back to the house, and, and she pitches a fit, and stomps off, and she takes off. Well... Okay. After a little while, like, I started thinking, well, where'd the girl go? And, uh, oh, find my phone. So I go ahead, I open my phone back up, and I'm like, man, I've got you now. And, and uh, <laughs> I find her iPhone again. Well, man, it says she's at a motel on the southwest side. And I said, oh. So I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I'm already in the car at this point, on my way to the motel. Like, I'm a, I know you're there. So here I come pull up to the motel, and I see her car. So I send another message. I said, uh, babe, what's the room number? You know, and she don't reply. I don't get a response. I said, what, baby, you're not happy to see me? You know what I mean? I came all the way down here to catch up with you. No reply. So I'm not gonna sit there and just drag this out. If she wanna reply, I'm gonna just move around and I'll deal with it later, whatever the case may be. So about 15 minutes after I leave from the hotel, now all of a sudden her iPhone password is changed. The email password is changed. And when she checks in later, I said, uh, you didn't see the messages? She said, what messages? Well, obviously, you're on your phone changing your passwords. How you didn't see the messages? So, hold on. Let me, I need to talk to Miss Staley. Miss Staley, were you at a motel after this fight? Uh, yes. And, and they had other people there. So, it wasn't just you in the hotel room. It was other people? Yes. And this person? Yes. Why didn't you respond to Mr. Ducharme's because I had messages? Because <laughs> I know what he's doing while I'm gone, looking for me. You like that? Yeah. So, you were at a hotel with this friend, and how many people were there in the room that you were in? Um, like, four. And did okay. they stay there all night with you? No, I wasn't there all night. How okay. many men, how many women? Uh, there were girls. Mm. Other than the guy whose room it is, there's the girls. Okay. You say you didn't stay there all night. Did you ever go and spend the night anywhere, go to sleep? No. No, you didn't. Oh, man. You're saying no. this to me like, I, I shouldn't have an expectation I... that you went to sleep. People go to sleep. Right, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> 
okay. You had like, no. Like, why would I go to sleep? Well, yeah. it's three in the morning. That's what people do. Right, right. No, I left there and when oh, he yeah. fell asleep, but it was... All right. It, so she calls you a day or two later. It's like, hey, babe. And like, no, nothing's happened, I correct? Don't, I don't exactly call right, him. Yeah. And so you, you take her back, I guess, because you're here. Right. What else have you seen that makes you he, believe that she's cheating? Okay, the second example... Okay, so after all that happens, I was like, maybe we just need vacation. So we rent, we go to this little beach house, we get a beach house for a few days, and, uh, and we're out there, and we have a private pier. And she's nice. like, man, my ex would love this place because he loves to fish. And, and like, she said her ex, right? And like, so I'm like, yeah, okay, well, tell him to come on. I'm not tripping. He's a fisherman, I understand. He want to fish, come fish. We got a private pier, it's nice, good fishing. So... You, you that were... kind of brother. You that kind of man. You were okay with her ex coming? Absolutely, I know, I know. man, I didn't, I didn't think twice about it. So I'm out, I'm out fishing and I come inside the house, right? And I guess she doesn't hear me come back inside the house, right? And she's in the tub having this conversation. Talking about, uh, no, he ain't gonna be here. Just come over, it'll just be us. Uh, he'll be out fishing with old man all night long. Uh, Aaron, uh, uh. that's not true. Hold on, Miss Staley. Uh, okay, so long story short, my friend says, do you want me to come get you? Because I explained to my friend what I'm hearing and like, I probably should just remove myself from the situation because I don't want this to escalate into something. I'm just gonna let it play out and see how it goes. Because I have a feeling, and generally I'm right. So, <laughs> all right, I, I, here, here's the thing. I'm gonna ask you some yes or no questions, okay? Did you have a conversation with this friend? He called to say he's bringing a computer part for Aaron. Okay, did you tell him to come by the house because uh, no, I said Mr. Deshaun won't I, be there? I said the door's open, he can come by, bring the computer part. I didn't say I was, I was gonna go fishing too. That doesn't take 25 minutes to conversate about in the bathroom. Like, you're gonna I was bring on the phone okay, for 25 minutes. Board, boom, got it. Nobody was on the phone for 25 minutes. Were well, you on the same people. beach house? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Right? That's what I'm trying to say. What happens after all that? Okay, well, while I was gone from the beach house, uh, the ex shows up, right? There, he could probably tell you what happened while I was gone. All right, would you step to the podium, please? <coughs> would you state you, you, your name? You Ron, can stand, still stand next Ron, to it. Ron Rougeau. Ron, Mr. Rougeau. What's the nature of your relationship? I, I dated her for a year and a half before he did. Okay, so okay. you're her ex? Yeah. Okay. Oh! When I showed up at the beach house, I brought a girl with me. Okay. I'm not stupid. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I, wasn't, I wasn't gonna get, uh, I wasn't gonna get caught up in this. Okay, are you the, <laughs> are you the ex that she wanted to come to the beach house? Yeah. This is the fisherman. Yeah, I'm the fish, I like to You're fish. the fisherman. She, she, she knew I like to fish, so she, she invited me to come up there because he liked to fish. We thought we'd be maybe fish right, fish right. We did. We fished the whole time. And then um, later on, you know, she, she leaves. There comes a luxury car. And she, she leaves with this guy in the car. Miss Daly does. Yeah, she takes off and leaves with this guy in the car, and then um. Then, then, well, I stay fishing. Me and my girlfriend, we party around the house. We're the only ones there in this big <laughs> house, chilling out. You and know? you were like, this is great. I get the jacuzzi, get the jacuzzi. We have a blast, you know? Then I go out there fishing. <laughs> and then he, he shows up later on. Here he comes. So we go right back to the river, start fishing again, you know what I mean? But then, oh, my phone's going off. It's, it's, it's texting, you know, every 30 minutes or something. She's, she's, Me, Megan's texting me. She's saying, is Aaron there yet? Has he showed up yet? Has he come back yet? So he goes, he goes, just don't respond, man. I said, okay. Put it back in my pocket and kept on fishing. Mr. Ducharme, did Mr. Rougeau ever tell you he saw Miss Staley leaving a luxury car with another man? Yes, uh, Your Honor, he did. When I, when I first got back to the beach house the next day, uh -huh. and when I went to get my stuff that I had left there, uh -huh. and I said, uh, I said, so Megan left? And he said, uh, yeah, she left with old boy that came by. Did you care that she left? I mean, yeah. what? I thought coming, Judge. Like I said, I heard the conversation. Like, I know what's coming next. So I just... So you just so... got... You just went to the fishing. I went to the fishing. <laughs> Mr. Right. Rougeau, you, you may have a sit down. Um, so thank Ms. you, sir. So, Miss Staley, did you leave the beach house in a luxury car no. with a man who came to pick no. you up? I left in my luxury car by with myself. A... By yourself? With all my stuff. They oh. completely... They couldn't even fit a person in there other than me. So you weren't with a man while you were at the no. beach house? No, no. A and no man came to pick you up? Nobody came to pick me up. Okay, Mr. Deshar, she, according to your testimony, because I don't think y'all are on the same planets, but that's fine. <laughs> but you're, according to your testimony, she left with a guy, you fished, and then you eventually left, right? Y yes, Judge. Okay. How did you all get back together? Well, once I leave the beach house, she doesn't call, she doesn't text, like, hey, baby, coming back? Hey, where are you? How long? <clears throat> okay, about nine days she's gone. You go for nine... Y'all would separate for nine days. You don't hear hide or oh, hair no, no, from no. her. I hear plenty because I... Like, I know we have a bunch of mutual friends. So here we go about nine days later. I hear she gets in a car wreck, flips her car. So I'm thinking... Her car? 
I thought her car, but it turns out, no, she was in the luxury car with the same man. And she's in a car wreck and it flips? Yeah, flipped about nine times, yeah. Okay. Is this true? But you were in a car wreck? Yes. Okay, that's the only thing you all agreed to besides the fact that y'all here. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So you find out she's in a wreck. What happened when you saw her again, and what was that circumstance? A week later. Okay, when I saw her again was... A week later. How many days? Shh. Man, it, it was probably at least nine days. Okay, so nine days later, you see her. Uh, During those nine days, she's, like, laid up in these hotels with him throughout the whole time. Oh, uh, you're... Okay. All right. Okay, all right. Now, what's your side of the story? When, after the beach house... Yeah. A couple days later, yes, I got into the car accident. Okay. So, game over, I'm going to a hotel. So, did you go to a hospital? No, um, there was uh, a little incident with that. I sent the ambulance away. I didn't go. And so, you go to a hotel at that point with this man. To, yeah, to get the glass out of my... Instead of everywhere. a hospital. Right, because that's what you do when you have glass in your body, mm -hmm. Mr. Cutler. You go right. to a motel. You, you don't have insurance. <laughs> okay, so do you spend the night in the hotel with this gentleman? No, because I'm gone most of it. What do you mean you're gone most of it? When I, when I came back, he's asleep. I take a bath. I wake up, he's still asleep. So then I'm, I'm going downstairs for breakfast. So you did spend the night? But he's not, yeah, we're not even, it's like we have two different rooms. Where do two different rooms come in? No, it's like, it's like, is this if we do? Because he's, he's doing his own thing, he's just a friend. Jeez. I can't be in a hotel with a friend. Okay. okay. We're not saying that you can't. We're asking right. you, did you stay yes. in the hotel room with him? Yeah. Okay, okay. so one not room. With him. One room. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's like, here's the key, I have a key. We come and go. It's our friends. Okay. How many nights did you spend in the hotel with One. this One. And if I was even there the whole night, no. Okay. The eight days, the eight days before your arrest I... in this hotel, where yeah. were you? I was at my roommate's or my family member. Are you saying that you were not with this other no. man during that time period? No. You did not have sex with this gentleman? Hell no. And you have not cheated on Mr. Ducharme? Never. All right. Mr. Right. Carla, I don't think I can he... stand any more evidence. All right. So, with that said, we need some help getting to the bottom of this. <laughs> and fortunately, this court him. has done a full and a complete investigation to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. At this time, the court will call former military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine <sighs> is she cheating? <laughs> Bob, please escort Ms. Sisko now. Lena Sisko. Good day, Ms. Cisco. How are you? I am well, Your Honor. How are you? I'm doing fine. It's good to see you. Good. Good to see you. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I'm a former military interrogator certified by the Department of Defense. And shortly after 9-11, I was mobilized and deployed to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Since that time, I have been working with and training law enforcement personnel, military personnel, and government agency personnel in interview and interrogation techniques. Tell us, please, what you did to investigate this case. So I had the accused write a witness statement, and she was good because she provided a lot of details in that. And so I went through it, analyzed it for any indicators of deception and truthfulness, and I put together an interview strategy. And then I interviewed Ms. Staley to see if she was cheating on Mr. Ducharme. What did you learn about Ms. Staley when Mr. Mm -hmm. Ducharme tracked her to the hotel? So Ms. Staley did admit to me that she likes to play games on Mr. Ducharme. So she will purposely disappear on him because it makes him come find her. And so she likes that. She wants to feel wanted and needed. And she told me that the time that he had come to the motel, that she even did a victory dance because she was so happy as if to say, you know what, I got him. He did come find me, so I must mean something to him. Okay. What did you find out about Miss Staley's guy friend from the beach house? When I asked her if she had sex with this guy, she jumped up out of the chair and cursed and said no. She kept stopping me and went through a whole entire list of details of what happened in that three-day period. And I was a little exhausted because like what you heard here, it was a little confusing, but I got to the bottom of it. What was your overall opinion about Miss Staley? Miss Staley is over the top in love with Mr. Ducharme, and she even told me that this guy is her soulmate. So I do not believe she's cheating on him, and I believe she's being truthful. All right.
Well, Mr. Ducharme, you came here to get some answers. You've gotten those answers. Turns out that Ms. Staley has not been cheating. What is the future of your relationship with Ms. Staley? <clears throat> I guess it can get better from here. Okay. Uh, you all have known each other for 10 years. You've been dating exclusively for three years. Mr. Oliver, why have you brought your girlfriend to court today? I brought her to court today because recently I've been having issues and I think my girlfriend is cheating on me. And it's like, for me to get to the bottom of things sometimes, I always have to end up going through her phone just to see what is actually going on. All right, Ms. Nelson, why are you here? I am here to save my relationship. I mean, I messed up in the past, yes. But since then, I have fixed my mistakes and I haven't done them again. I'm just tired of the accusations. So she just said she messed up in the past. Yeah. What happened? Well, there was an instance where I call her, I get, I get no response. So when I go over to her house, knock on the door, knock on the door, nobody comes to the door. So I look in the parking lot and I see a familiar car, which is her ex-boyfriend's car. So finally she opens the door comes out and shuts the door behind her. She gets in her car and says, you shouldn't be here, and speed off and leave me standing there. The truth is, first of all, my mom always raised me, don't show up at somebody's house unless, you, unless you've been told to come over. I was worried. I, I was worried. I, I, I get that. Uh, home oh training teaches us to do that. But, but wait, if, if you're in a relationship... Exactly. You, but I was about to Thank say... You, yeah, if you, Thank I, you, I, 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 I can't show up at your house unexpected. Yeah, I mean, you know... If you don't need an invitation to go oh, to your girlfriend's house. I agree. I hope no. you don't. No, 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 I, no. I, I we, don't, we are not in disagreement. I can show up at our house uninvited because I'm your wife. I'm your girlfriend or something like that. But And no, even no. when we're dating and living in separate apartments. I mean, yeah. I didn't need an invitation. If I needed one, I didn't use one. I just went over <laughs> and went out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you're not saying he needed an invitation to come visit his girlfriend, are you? It was the beginning of our relationship. Okay, how beginning was it? Y'all been dating a month, two weeks, Six two months. months? Like a couple months. No, you don't get a buy on that one. Yeah. But do you jump in your car and drive off and leave him standing there like that? I didn't want the drama. And I was hanging out with my ex, but we were just hanging out. And it did go somewhere where I didn't necessarily want it to go, but I apologized. I told him I was sorry. I didn't mean she to hurt broke him. My heart. <laughs> All right, well, Mr. Oliver. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Why'd you take her back? I took her back because I love her and I do want to be with her. And you wanted to be with him? Yes, I mean, we were friends before we had a relationship. We went to high school together. So okay. one of my favorite times we ever had together was when we went to Stone Mountain. I felt safe and secure, like he protected me and, and helped me get to the bottom of the mountain safely. So it's like, we have a deeper bond and it's not something that I want to let go. So you all are at the top of the mountain together. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're here at the bottom. Why do you think she's cheating? There was an instance where we were hanging out all day and she wanted to go hang with a family member. I'm like, cool, let's go, because I, like, I want to go hang with your family, too. She said, no, you can't go. Come to find out, she was not hanging with the family member. She was hanging with a friend. But I told him that. I told him that. Hold on, she didn't tell me where they were going to be in a hotel room. Ooh. And I presume this friend was a male friend, not a girlfriend. It definitely was a male friend. How did you find all this out? I went through her phone. And when I read the text messages, I don't go to her and the guy's text messages. I go to her and her girlfriend text messages, because, you know, that's where all the juicy stuff is at. The best friend. The oh. best friend. Wait, wait, wait. And, and... <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Oliver figured out the juice... Right. ...the meat... It's with the girlfriend. With the girlfriend. With the girlfriend. He's gonna break it down with her, not with him. But he him. didn't even have to do all okay. that because I told him. I told Yo, him. Yana, I, I do have uh, evident text message okay. all right, that I would like to present to, to you. But Check he doesn't Check even have to go through my phone. And I you're, allow lo you're looking at the conversations with her and her girlfriend. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. It says, girl, are you good? She was oh missing again. Somebody, somebody noticed she was missing again. Okay. Oh, my God, boo. Let me tell you what happened last night. Shaking my head. I was about to send a search team out on your... I met up with this guy I used to talk to back in the day. He blessed me with the best massage I ever had. Her best friend said, you bad, girl. <laughs> okay, so it did not happen like that. Previously in that day... Okay, wait a minute. What? <laughs> blessed me with the best massage ever. 
I ever had. had. And I previously given a massage before, so obviously mine wasn't. <laughs> Oh, I, so you get you get the we double day. No, I guess, okay, no, I guess no. mine wasn't the best. Well, he's not gonna make himself sound so innocent. <laughs> now my friend came in town for work, and his work ended up being late. So by the time he got done with his work, it was nothing else to do but to chill at his hotel. My back was hurting a little bit, so he was like, "Let me just, you know." He massaged my back a little bit, and then he mm -hmm. massaged it a little bit more. Gave me a good massage, and he tried to take it further, but because I'm in a relationship, I did not allow it to go further. Is this a man you've ever been intimate with? Years and years and years <laughs> and years. <laughs> we'll take that as a yes. Yes. All right. So, Were you intimate with him that night? No. Just a massage? Yes. The problem is, you might be honest, and I'm putting that in, like, <clears throat> capital might be honest, but the problem is you're not forthright, and there's a difference. And in a relationship, you've got to have what I call a little bit of integrity. And your integrity has been compromised because you won't be forthright. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help to be honest on the back end. You've got to be forthright on the front end. Mm -hmm. You believe that she had an intimate relationship with that person? Yes. That time and also another time as well. What happened? Well, okay, she was supposed to be going to Augusta with her cousin. So, again, as I walk to the parking lot, I see her cousin's car is there. So I'm like, can't go to Augusta if the car is here. So I'm calling, texting. This is Saturday. No response, no response. Monday morning, she answers the phone. So I'm like, where were you? She wasn't in Augusta. She was in the Bahamas. I mean, I know I have a bad sense of direction, but I, even I... All right, help me understand, Miss Nelson. Okay, I went with my friend Shelby. Okay. And her and her and her friends, her boyfriend and and their friends. How many women in your group? There was two. How many men in your group? There were two. However, oh. however, two. However, the Thank guy, you, Your Honor. the guy, the guy who went Shelby's boyfriend's friend, uh -huh. his girlfriend was supposed to go. Something happened with him and his girlfriend. She couldn't go, so it was a free trip for me. Who was in whose cabin? We all stayed in the cabin together. How many beds in the cabin? Four. They had bunk beds, like the bunk bed type situation. So who was on top? They're bunk beds. <laughs> They're bunk beds. Somebody's got to be on top. Really, Judge? That's how it works. <laughs> who was? Who was where? I, I can't believe I slept on that. top bunk. You were on the top. She was on top, Cutler. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, All right. Mr. Cutler, Mr. Cutler. And, and as you hear this, Mr. Oliver, do you think that she slept with the other gentleman? It's questionable. Well, let's mm. ask her friend. Would you please stand? All right, would you please state your name for the record? Shelby Womack. Miss Womack, thank you for being here. Tell me about this trip to the Bahamas. My cousin's girlfriend couldn't go on the trip any longer, and the trip had already been paid for. So she just packed a bag and we went. And we had a try to have a really good time. Okay, we you tried, tried to have a good... You didn't have a good time? What happened was he started getting on social media and calling her. He even was calling me and DMing me on Facebook. It became psychotic, borderline stalkerish. Did she tell you that she had snuck out of the country without telling her boyfriend? No, I did not know that. I mean, I was going to tell him, and it was, the trip was last minute. Like, they told me the week of that I could come. OK, but so that meant you had a week to tell your boyfriend. <laughs> You are grasping at straws and drowning. You believe something happened on this trip with her and the other gentleman? Yes, John, I do. Tell her how you feel about this. Heartbroken. I just want us to move forward and be one. And I just want the truth. I do too, but you're so insecure, babe. I don't be doing nothing, I swear to you. I don't do nothing. Okay, Miss Nelson, you are testifying that you have not cheated since that incident over three years ago. Is that correct? Correct. Mr. Oliver, what is at stake here today? What is at stake is our relationship because we have a very, very strong friendship. But if it comes down to it, 
then I just don't want to be in a repeat situation over and over. Okay. It's a lot here. Well, to get to the bottom of these cheating allegations, uh, the court engaged the services of a licensed private investigator, Mr. Todd Redding, and he's here today with his findings. Ron, please show Mr. Redding into the courtroom. Yes, y'all. Obviously. Mr. Redding, how are you today? Fine, Your Honor. Thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. What did you do to investigate today's case? Your Honor, my team and I performed video surveillance on Ms. Nelson. We, uh, over last week, we followed her several days and video documented every move. So, Mr. Reddy, what did you discover <laughs> through this investigative process? Well, I have the video evidence here today, Your Honor. Okay. Can you walk us through it? Yes, Your Honor. At 8.23 p.m., Ms. Nelson was seen walking her dog outside of her apartment building. She was very active with her cell phone, as you can see. Her eyes didn't seem to ever leave the screen. At 9.09 uh, .09 p.m. on Saturday, uh, Miss Nelson was seen leaving her apartment and walking to her car with the two other females. She was wearing club attire, like short shorts and uh, a crop top t-shirt. At 9.30 p.m., we tracked Miss Nelson to a club type lounge located in the downtown area of her hometown. This is where she was dropped off and one of the passengers came around to the driver's side of the vehicle and drove off. Miss Nelson, did you go to a club that night? He set me up. Um, I went to work. I'm a bartender. All right, Mr. Oliver? Yes, How, Do you believe what she's testified to? Yes, I believe. All right. She did, she does, she does work at a bar. But I've never seen her in a club attire. Well, in her work attire. That's how I make my tips. All right, Ms. Nelson, there's another piece to this investigation. Before we get to that, is there anything that you want to tell this court and Mr. Oliver? No. Nothing besides the fact that I love him dearly and I just want to move past this. I want this over and done with so we can move forward. You were ordered to take a polygraph exam, is that correct? Correct. And you took it? Yes. Mr. Redding, a member of your team gave Ms. Nelson the polygraph and you have the results, is that That's correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Nelson was asked, the night your boyfriend found texts about you getting a massage in a hotel, did you have sexual, physical contact or sexual intercourse with that man? What was her response? Ms. Nelson's response was no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that Ms. Nelson was being deceptive. Are you kidding me? I don't want to hear no more. I don't want to hear no more because that is a lie. That is a lie. I did not have sex with that man. Did you have sexual physical contact with that man? No, I did not. Massage could be physical contact. A massage, but nothing else. I, I, I spoke about the massage. That's it. The massage was not sexual on his part? No, it because was not Because you said he wanted something else, right? He did, yes. And so, you know, there's one way that a professional masseuse would give you a massage. There's another way that someone who's looking to take it to the next level might give you a massage. And so, if this person was trying to take it to the next level, and he's giving you a massage, that could be sexual contact. The way he does it, the way he's trying to get you relaxed and in the mood. Did you kiss him? No, ma'am, I did not. There's another question. Ms. Nelson was asked, other than the one man your boyfriend is aware of, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man since your relationship began in 2014? Ms. Nelson's response was no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being deceptive. I am done. I don't want to do this anymore. That is a lie. That is a lie. I don't... I'm, I don't want to hear no more else. I, I don't... I just need to be excused. I don't want... 
Miss Oliver, what's going through your mind? I love her. I'm in love with her. Ron, would you please go get Miss Nelson? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Nelson. Miss Nelson, I can tell and I know this is very emotional for you, but the truth will set this relationship free. Can you tell him the truth? I love you. I haven't been with anybody else. I'm not lying to you.